osimertinib works very well in the ref EGFR, TKI, refractory setting for those patients that are T790M positive. It works so well uh, that it's now being evaluated frontline in the FLORA study. It's a very clean study. Patients with EGFR sensitizing mutations are randomized to osimertinib versus erlotinib. Keep in mind, osimertinib is a wonderful T790M directed therapy. It also happens to hit very well the sensitizing mutations as well. Um, so this is a head-to-head -head comparison between the two. Uh, I think we'll know results by the end of this year, 2017, perhaps sooner. The study's already fully accrued. If the study shows a positive result and, and, and a dramatic improvement in progression-free survival, I think it's going to be hard not to use this drug. Um, the phase one study with this drug uh, showed a response rate in the high 70s with a progression-free survival of around 19 months. That's unprecedented with any first-line drug. So I think we're all very excited. I think we have to temper that enthusiasm and excitement until we see the head-to-head -head comparison. Uh, we don't know how to manage patients post osimertinib. We don't. We know some signals of resistance to osimertinib, including C797S mutations, um, which is different than erlotinib. We know the resistant mechanisms of erlotinib are T790M, in which we could deliver osimertinib. So. We'll have to see. Um, the data, at least the phase one data, looks very compelling. Um, and this is why we do the head-to-head -head trial. This is why, we, this is why you, you do the trial, uh, to, to get a better understanding. And if that study is dramatically positive or drastically positive with a huge benefit in progression-free survival, I would argue that osimertinib may become, at that time, the de facto standard of care for all EGFR, mutant stage four lung cancer. Um, what is the future for patients um with these um, uh, EGFR mutations, well, now we have first-line therapy with tyrosine kinase inhibitors. Now we have second-line therapy with osimertinib. And the question is about how about instead of waiting for the patients to develop resistance to the original therapy, uh, what we can put on, osim on osimertinib up front so they can benefit of the best drug up front. That makes a lot of sense. And, uh, and uh, we have a study ongoing to prove that. And uh, we have a study comparing osimertinib versus erlotinib and gefitinib to try to prove which one is better. And maybe osimertinib may be a better agent. But what bothers us is because we don't have, a, uh, we're still not curing lung cancer. We don't have a lot of agents for lung cancer. Nowadays, if the patient with EGFR mutation gets a tyrosine kinase inhibitor, whatever, whichever of the three you want to choose, you buy one more year of life for the patient. And when the patient fails, you have, uh, hopefully, you buy another year of life for osim with osimertinib, and you still can, after two years, start palliative chemo, and hopefully get another year of life. I think the, one of the combination strategies being looked at is with anti-angiogenic strategies, or anti-angiogenic drugs. There's been some nice Japanese data comparing erlotinib versus erlotinib plus bevacizumab, showing a dramatic improvement in progression-free survival. Um, this study is now being redone in the U.S. Uh, and in a U.S. population to see if the addition of bevacizumab to erlotinib versus erlotinib alone shows any benefit. So I think that's promising. I think many in the U.S. have started using bevacizumab in combination with erlotinib uh, for patients that are EGFR mutant lung cancer based on that Japanese data. Uh, I don't routinely do it yet, although uh, I may change once the U.S. data. I think there are several different strategies looking at EGFR TKIs in combination with immunotherapy, although that uh, strategy has been halted by some toxicity signals that we have to keep in mind. So whether that will pan out uh, in, in, in later trials, we don't know. We had also uh, uh, some nice data looking at chemotherapy with TKIs that perhaps fell under the radar, but pimetrexid in combination with gefitinib improved progression-free survival versus gefitinib alone. Uh, and that was data, again, a little bit underrepresented in the web blasts, but there in the JCO this year uh, showing a benefit as well. So um, we'll have to see, and things may change dramatically if osimertinib becomes frontline, then we have to re-alter all the trials again. Uh, to see uh, how to advance the science if osimertinib comes frontline. But I think certainly uh, anti-angiogenic strategies, potentially immunotherapy, although there are some safety signals to consider, and some chemotherapeutic strategies are being looked at. EGFRs is very challenging because um, uh, 
remember when the patient developed the after first line they develop mutations we are only talking about now of about 7 a.m and the use of osimertinib but we have to remember that another 40 percent of the patients have other pathways of resistance no apart from the small cell that is the histologic transformation of the tumor we have probably another 30 percent of the patients that develop other pathways that you used to escape uh, um, the inhibition and they become resistant, like CMET, for example, or PI3 KSA. So all of these pathways need to be targeted. So that's why uh, our interest now is to find drugs to block these pathways. So if the patient develops resistance and does not carry the 7IM, uh, fine, he will not be he will not get osimertinib, but does not necessarily has to go for chemo if we can give a CMET inhibitor, for example. So that's one option for the second line. If the patient has a 7 IM and the patient fails of simertinib, that's another area of challenge for us. Because nowadays, if the patient develops resistance to the 7 IM, um, the most popular mutation called is 7I7S. Um, there was a presentation in uh, uh, last year in, uh, in ASCO that uh, they show very clear that from 15 patients that have failed 7 IM, at least six or seven develop the 797S mutation. So we can target now this mutation and try to find also new drugs that can work on that. So in that way, the patient doesn't have to go for palliative chemotherapy yet. So that's, all of these areas are, are areas under investigation and they are very interesting for us. That's why we have to be doing serial biopsies and because maybe serial biopsy of tissue is too complicated for the patient, maybe the serial liquid biopsy is a good alternative for, for us.